Alzheimer's and iron dysregulation. Hi everyone, I am Dr. Michael Johnson. I'm a board certified chiropractic neurologist. I've been in private practice in Appleton, Wisconsin since 1983. So I was doing functional medicine before they called it functional medicine 39 years ago. We called it vitamin therapy, nutritional therapy. But I wanna share with you what iron does with the Alzheimer's patient, and it's too much iron. It's called iron overload syndrome. And you can check this by checking their ferritin levels. Normal ferritin should be 20 to 50. Anything above 50 is iron overload. Anything below 20 is called iron dysregulation. And it's important because high iron forms those amyloid plaques in the brain and it causes neurodegeneration. So it's just not Alzheimer's, it's Parkinson's, it's MS, it's a number of other neurological conditions. You don't have to believe a word I say. Just Google high iron in Alzheimer's or go to pubmed.gov. That's where all the scientific papers are, pubmed.gov, P-U-B-M-E-D.gov and just type in high iron, which is also known as hemochromatosis and Alzheimer's. You'll see for yourself. It's right there. And so why, why does an Alzheimer's patient have an issue with iron? Well, think about it. You've been consuming iron since you were a little kid. When you're eating the box of cereal, it's iron fortified. It's um, iron enriched, that's the term they use. Anything packaged, any type of pasta, bread, all iron enriched. And especially if you have a genetic component to where you're more susceptible, like myself, to hemochromatosis, which is very possible because that's very high, you're going to be in trouble, serious trouble. So you just get a simple blood test. If you're the caregiver for an Alzheimer's patient, just take them to their MD, the MD will run it. But you don't even need an MD, you can just Google, um, order my own lab test near me. And you can go to, here's the companies, request a test, any lab test now, walk-in lab, Quest Direct, LabCorp On Demand, Direct Labs, there it is. But I can promise you that, I won't guarantee it, but I'll come as close as I can, that if, if you're a caregiver for an Alzheimer's patient, they have high iron. They have high stored iron. See, you want your iron circulating. And so you could say, because this is the case with me, well, uh, I'm a caregiver for an Alzheimer's patient, and they're anemic. Well, that's because they don't have circulating iron, but their stored iron is very high. So my ferritin level was 365. Normal is 20 to 50. And yet I was anemic. And I'll show you my blood work. My iron saturation was like 67, it should be 100. It's crazy. So there can be other uh, symptoms with iron overload, just not the amyloid placking, but inflammation. Inflammation is a big player with Alzheimer's, especially brain inflammation. Numbness, tiredness or fatigue, weakness, weight gain or loss. Does uh, your Alzheimer's patient have abdominal pain or high blood sugar levels? All related to iron overload. Hyperpigmentation of the skin or bronzing. A loss of sex drive, reduced testicles in men, reduced or absent menstruation in women, chronic pain, arthritis, liver disease, cirrhosis, enlargement of the liver, diabetes, severe thyroid disorders, heart disease, pancreatitis, high cholesterol, we're gonna talk about that, because you need cholesterol for your brain, cancer, stroke, kidney disease, lung disease. Well, let's talk about cholesterol, because everybody and their uncle is on cholesterol meds. It's epidemic. 
And yet no cardiologist will tell you what I'm about to tell you because it's easier to write you a script for a statin and they make billions of dollars. Big Pharma runs physicians for the most part. They send in their minion drug reps. The drug rep tells the physician what to do. That's what they do. Well, cholesterol, when iron is high, magnesium is low. When magnesium levels are low, the enzyme that creates cholesterol, the HMG coenzyme A, goes into overdrive and creates excess cholesterol. Stress, stress can cause high iron and low magnesium in your body. Not just emotional stress, but environmental stress, like chemicals, heavy metals, a poor diet, lack of sleep, mold, toxins. And aging, aging is when you have iron oxidation, it's rust, it's high iron in your system. And it, it causes the mitochondria not to produce ATP, the energy in your cells. So here's my initial reading. Uh, I went into the hospital, I had severe uh, gallbladder attack. I had surgery, they, I had pneumonia, they gave me Lasix. Uh, they gave me too much Lasix, it caused my kidneys to crash. I went into acute kidney failure and congestive heart failure. So I come out of the hospital, I run my labs. This is what I get. Like I said, I was anemic. My CRM iron was 69. My ferritin was 365, that's stored iron. My uh, hematocrit was low, my hemoglobin was low. My vitamin A was the exact opposite of what it should be. It should be three times higher than vitamin D. My vitamin D was three times higher than my vitamin A. It wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. And that can lead to a bunch of problems, including kidney stones, which I had. So, yeah, you have an Alzheimer's patient, you run the ferritin, ferritin's high. Then you run what that's called a magnesium, zinc, copper, and iron panel. And then you want complete blood work. You want complete blood work. And this will check their glucose levels. Why is glucose important? Because your brain and nerves need two things to survive, fuel and activation. Fuel is oxygen and glucose. You already have issues with amyloid placking. It's due to high iron. You'll read that if you go to pubmed.gov or just Google high iron and Alzheimer's or hemochromatosis and Alzheimer's. You don't have to believe a word I say, it's all there. Well, why didn't my physician tell me this? There isn't a drug for high iron. There's a drug for high cholesterol and everybody's getting it. If there was a drug for high iron, folks, trust me, you would, it'd be all over TV. You'd see it on the ad during the news, just like you do with uh, statins. There's no money in it. If there's no money in it, drug companies aren't going to push it. So why glucose levels? Like I said, brain and nerves. Gut function, 80% of your immune system. Plus there's a brain-gut connection. Adrenal function, adrenal function, your stress glands, kidney and liver function. You want a complete lipid panel. Looking at your cholesterol, triglycerides, cholesterol, HDL, ADL, HDL, LDL. You want a CBC with auto diff. You want a complete thyroid panel. Thyroid drives your metabolism. Plus you want to look at C-reactive protein and homocysteine. The amount of inflammation in your system. Systemic inflammation. And when you get all that blood work, you get this packet, this booklet back and what we do is we put it into our database and it comes out like this uh, lab ranges which are very broad functional ranges a lot narrower the red is abnormal the yellow is abnormal for instance let me give you an example liver enzymes the lab range for liver enzyme is 0 to 40 functional range is 10 to 26 ideally 15 to 26 and so why do you want to wait till you're like at 38 head and south on your liver when you could have prevented that by keeping it in the functional range? So that's the reason. With Alzheimer's, with any type of testing, especially when it comes to iron, because iron 
combines with hydrogen peroxide, which makes a hydroxyl radical, which is extremely toxic. If you went and Googled high iron and cancer, you will see increased levels of iron are linked to uh, leukemia, lymphoma, liver cancer. It's all there. Same thing, just go to pubmed.gov, P-U-B-M-E-D.gov. That's all the research. Just search these things I'm telling you to search. You'll see they're all true. Well, there are other factors. You want to look at glutamate. Glutamate is excitatory in the brain. If your Alzheimer's patient isn't sleeping, they're not converting glutamate, excitatory, to GABA, which is inhibitory. So I have an issue with this. I have to take something that helps me convert the two. Otherwise, I'm not sleeping. You want to look at histamine. Is there a mold issue? Um, I have a histamine issue. I have a mold issue. Homocysteine, I told you about. You're looking at inflammation, sulfites, dopamine. Uh, something called an NADPH steel. See, genetic variations, there are mutations. They can cause inflammation. They can affect detox pathways, brain chemicals, which is important in the Alzheimer's patient, hormone levels, organ function, and vitamin and mineral levels. So you don't want to leave any stone unturned is what I'm saying. Um, when I first got into genetic testing, I studied with a physician, Kendall Stewart, down in Texas. Great guy. Then Dr. Ben Lynch. He's a naturopath up in the northwest part of the country. Then Dr. Mark Harris, a brilliant physician. And uh, a good friend of mine, Dr. Joel Rosen, turned me back on to Bob Miller. He said, you got to circle back and look at this. Functional genomics. Great, great stuff. So uh, there are some other books that I would recommend. Um, this one. This one's really good. Uh, Metabolical, right there. The Lure and the Lies of Processed Food. Remember I said iron's in processed food, all processed food. Nutrition and Modern Medicine. Uh, another good book by Morley Robbins, Cure Your Fatigue. He talks about iron overload. He does a cookie cutter approach. I don't agree with it. I think it has to be an individualized approach. No two patients are the same. No two Alzheimer's patients are the same. Does that make sense to you? It should. Um, and then another one by Rick Malter, Strands of Health. And then another great guy, Dr. Robert Selig. I call him the master of minerals. A good friend of mine. He's down in Chicago. So at this point, you can say, hey, Dr. J, this is Alzheimer's, to which I will give you that point, but um, just run the ferritin test. See if you have high iron, then go back and Google high iron and Alzheimer's. Search high iron and Alzheimer's on pubmed.gov. And that's how you know it'll work for your Alzheimer's patient or not. If they have high iron, it needs to come down. It's just a simple $29 ferritin test. That's what we charge. Maybe any lab test now charges $49, but it's not expensive. Just run the test, and then you work up from there. Then you get a magnesium, zinc, copper, and iron panel. Then you get complete blood work. Then you get genetic testing. Then you roll it out. And you can say, well, I'm a caregiver for an Alzheimer's patient but they have a lot of other conditions. Will it help? Yes. Yes, the number one issue with high iron is that inflammation. Inflammation is the number one issue with a lot of chronic conditions. Now you can say how long and how much, I get this a lot. It's an investment in your health, I'm not gonna kid you. These lab tests, all the blood work we do, it's expensive. So, but we do offer financing if you're interested. For a year, 12 months, we charge 11995 For 18 months, we charge 14995 And for 24 months, we charge 19995 And like I said, we do offer financing. Um, so, 
that's yeah entirely up to you it's an investment in your health just like i said google it or go to pubmed.gov high iron and alzheimer's boom it's right there so if you would like to see if you can qualify to be a patient we don't accept everyone you can email me drmlj83 at gmail.com that's drmlj83 at gmail.com Share this video with your friends and family and on social media. And like I said, it's a drmlj83 at gmail.com. I'm going to send you some things if you email me, um, things that I really can't share on this video. Uh, it's a little bit more private. Uh, it doesn't violate HIPAA, <laughs> just so you're aware. Everything's good. Now, I'm Dr. Michael Johnson. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I look forward to helping uh, your Alzheimer's patient in the future.